Okay, so what do we got going on here? Well, we have some inequalities. Specifically, we have the inequality 2x is less than 4 or 5x is greater than or equal to 30. How do we solve this? Well, I want you to go ahead and try to solve and graph the solution to this problem. This is a typical type, uh, type of problem that you would find in like a pre-algebra or certainly an Algebra 1 course. Got to know how to deal with inequalities. Very, very important. So if you think you could do this problem, go to put your answer into the comment section. Now, you won't be able to put your graph into uh, the comment section, but you can put some form of the correct answer in uh, the comment section or just do this on a piece of paper. I'm going to show you the uh, correct answer to this in just one second. And of course, I'm going to explain exactly what to do in this particular problem. But uh, before we get going, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of TC Math Academy. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I've been teaching math for decades. I absolutely love help, uh, helping students learn mathematics. I'm going to tell you right now, all of you can be successful in math. And I'm especially speaking to those of you that are having a tough time in math. If you failed math before, if you are struggling with math right now, there is hope. Please do not give up, okay? You can do this stuff. You can be successful in math. What you need is three things. One, you gotta be willing to work hard. All students uh, that are gonna be successful in math work hard. Even those students who love math and math comes easy to them, they still put in the work. The second thing you need is encouragement. You need someone telling you that you in fact can do this. And that's really important for those of you that are kind of you know frustrated and just think you're not smart enough or you're just a bad math student. There is no such thing, okay? You, I'm telling you right now, you can do this. And I'm not lying to you, right? I, I'm very sincere when I'm saying that, yeah, you can be successful, but here is the most important component to that. You need great math instruction. So when you're learning from someone or something, you actually understand what's be, uh, being taught to you, okay? Uh, now, unfortunately, uh, math can be very technical. In other words, math can be taught, uh, I guess what I'm trying to say is uh, oftentimes math is taught in a very technical way, overly technical. Uh, and I think sometimes it's unnecessary to teach math uh, in that way, like a robot or just like a textbook, okay? That's not a good way to teach math. What I like to do is to explain things. I like to explain things in an easy to understand way so all students can get this stuff without watering down the material. Okay, so if you need help in your current math course, or maybe some sort of special test that you're getting ready for that has math on it, things like the GED, SAT, ACT, maybe a teacher certification exam, or if you're homeschooling mathematics, check out my math help program. I'm gonna leave a link to it in the description of this video. I literally have over 100 plus different math courses that span these categories and much, much more. I'm also gonna leave links to my uh, math notes in the description as well because uh, most students take uh, average notes at best. You don't want to know who takes the best notes. Those students that get these type of grades, A pluses. If you look at any student who does exceptional math, I'm telling you right now, they have um, uh, like 99.99% of the time, they have awesome math notes. There's a direct correlation to how well you do in math to the quality of your notes. So start improving your notes and things will get better. But in the meantime, uh, you can use my notes if you like. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at the solution here to this inequality. So 2x is less than 4 or, now this word's going to uh, play a nice role in this problem here. we got to definitely understand what this means. So 2x is less than uh, 4 or 5x is greater than or equal to 30. So what is the answer? Well, here it is right here. Here's the graph. X is less than 2 or X is greater than or equal to 6. So this is the graph. I'm going to explain all of this right here. And when it comes to solutions, uh, I'm sorry, solutions to inequalities, this is very different than uh, solutions to an equation. So for example, if I said 2X is equal to 10, how many answers uh, are there for this equation? Well, there's only one. X is equal to 5, right? There's one precise number that is the solution to this equation. So this is far different than this problem right here. Okay, let's just kind of make something up. So here is an inequality. Okay, how many numbers uh, make this uh, true? Okay, how many numbers are the solutions to this inequality? So we're saying some number x is greater than 3, but at the same time less than 4. So how many numbers satisfy that? Well, uh, 3.1. 
uh, 3.5, 3.7. Matter of fact, an infinite amount. Okay, so when we're dealing with more than one number in the solution set, then we like to use graphs. That why, that's why we graph uh, solutions uh, to inequalities. Okay, so here, let me give you an, actually an easier example. If x is less than 3, how many numbers are uh, the solution to this inequality? It's not just one, right? It's not like, well, 2 is less than 3. That's true, but so is 1. Okay, so is 0. And we can go on and on infinitely. So again, uh, that's one of the main concepts that you have to know about inequalities, that there's not going to be one single solution to them. That's why we like to use graphs. So here's the graph. I'm going to explain uh, the, uh, this whole thing here in a second. But if you got this right, well, that's very, very good. Matter of fact, let me give you a nice little happy face and A plus, A 100%, and a few stars so you can celebrate your success with inequalities. Nice job. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into the actual solution right now. Okay, so we have 2x is less than, and let's just make sure you understand this symbol here. This is the less than symbol. Notice it looks kind of like an L, okay, like a slanted L. So if you're confused, oh, is that less than or greater than? The one that looks like an L, like this, is less than. So the other one going in this direction is greater than. So, and so we have 2x is less than 4 or 5x is greater than or equal to 30. So this is an example of what we call a compound inequality. Okay, compound inequality. Uh, and when you start learning uh, basic inequalities in algebra and pre-algebra, you start off with simple, what we call linear inequalities, and then you kind of uh, move up to what we call compound inequalities. So this is an or situation. So we have 2x is less than 4, or 5x is greater than or equal to 30. What is x? What's the solution set for x? Now, what we're going to do, you can kind of already see the, uh, the work here. We're going to kind of like solve for x as if this was an equation. You basically use the same steps, um, same techniques and methods uh, that you solve uh, equations with to solve inequalities. There's a few added twists, uh, especially when you're dividing by negative numbers and things like that, but we're not going to get into that in this particular problem. But I do want to uh, talk about this word right here, or. So when you're dealing with a compound inequality, uh, we're saying this word or. Now here's the deal. Okay, compound inequalities are going to be those inequalities that have the word or or and. Okay, so if I, I could have wrote this problem as uh, 2x is less than 4 and 5x is greater than or equal to 30. Actually, this wouldn't have worked out because this is an or situation. But anyways, when you're dealing with those words or and and, you're talking about a compound inequality. And I want to explain this real quick before we get into the rest of the solution here. And we'll use this graph because I already have it up. So here's the thing, okay? Anytime you're dealing with an, uh, an inequality, okay, that has the word or, I want you to think of uh, or is like on a rowboat. So here's a little uh, boat, okay? Here's the water, here's someone in there rowing the boat, and here are some oars, okay? Now, you might be thinking to yourself, man, I think this guy's lost his mind. What is he talking about, rowboats and whatnot? Well, listen, I want you to think about oars of a boat, okay? So the graph of an oar situation will always look like this, okay? So when you see the word oar, you already know your graph is going to look like oars, something like this, okay? It's going to be separated. If you see the word and, okay, uh, in a compound inequality, I want you to think of the word hand, okay? So we see the word or, think of the word oars, like oars of a rowboat, right? Hopefully I spelled that right. Uh, so, and I want you to think of hand like in handlebars, okay? So this would be like the handlebar of a bike. Here's my lovely bike right there. So there's a bike. So and, an and graph will be one solid line like this, okay? An or graph will be separated like it is right here, all right? So right off the bat, you're going to know the basic shape of your compound inequality. Now, by the way, if you're kind of like, boy, I need help with inequalities, I'm going to suggest that you check out like my pre-algebra or Algebra 1 course in my math help program if you really, really want to learn this stuff, you know, uh, at a more advanced level or more comprehensive level. Anyways, okay, so we know that when I graph this thing, I'm going to have some sort of graph that looks like this. All right, but how do we uh, first kind of get to 
what x is equal to or uh, get this down to uh, uh, solve this inequality. Well, we want to kind of like solve for x. So we have 2x is less than 4. So we want to get x by itself. So here it's pretty simple. I'm going to divide both sides of the inequality by 2. So we have x is less than 2. Okay. Or over in this one, they got 5x is greater than or equal to 30. So I'm just going to divide both sides of the inequality by 5. I get x is greater than or equal to 6. Now, real quick, let me just make this point. If you have an inequality like 2x is less than 4, and you're dividing both sides of an inequality by a negative number, some of you might be thinking this, right? Like, hey, where's that little thing that I have to do? Well, if you divide both sides of an inequality or multiply both sides of an inequality by a negative number, you have to reverse the inequality symbol. So in this case, it would be x is greater than, this becomes, this reverses, then negative 2 because that's something to keep in mind. So that's why the steps you take to solve inequalities are effectively the same steps as you take to solve equations, but there is a few added twists like the one I just mentioned. All right, so these would be the solutions to the inequality, but again, we want to go ahead and graph those solutions. So how can we graphically represent uh, x is less than 2 or x is greater than or equal to 6? Well, here's the graph. Let's go ahead and look at it right now. Okay, so here's what I want you to do. When you uh, graph inequalities, just draw yourself a nice little number line like this, nice little straight line, and then the numbers involved are two and six. Uh, just go ahead and put circles on those number lines. So I'll kind of reconstruct this right here. So you would just draw a line and then go put right here two, this would be two, obviously two is gonna be to the left of six. Here's six, draw circles just like that. Okay, that's the first step. So you're like, okay, x is less than 2. This means all the numbers x. The solution to this is all the numbers that are less than 2. Where are the numbers less than 2? Okay, are they to the left or right of 2? Well, 3 is over here. 3 is not uh, less than 2. So that's not where the numbers that are less than 2. The numbers that are less than 2 are over here, like 1, 0, and this way. So we're going to draw an arrow in this direction, okay? And these represent all the numbers that are less than 2. Okay, so that takes care of that part of the graph. Now, mind you, we're dealing with an or situation, so we know our graph, our compound inequality, is going to look something like that. So let's go and take a look at uh, x is greater than or equal to uh, 6. So at 6, these are uh, two circles here. I'm going to think, okay, where are all the numbers that are greater than 6? Well, they're to the right of 6, right? This is where like 10 is at and 20, etc. So we're going to draw our arrow in that direction. Now, anytime you have uh, greater than or equal to or less than or equal to, you fill in the circle at that number, okay? You fill that circle in, and that's indicating that that number in and of itself is a solution. So 6, the number 6, is a solution. So 6 is, in fact, greater than or equal to 6, because greater than or equal to 6 means 6 is greater than or equal to 6. We can write that, um, you know, think of the symbol this way, greater than or equal to is this way. Hey, is 6 greater than or equal to 6? Yeah, 6 is equal to 6. That is true. So that's why you fill this in. And this would be your final graph, and this would be the solution to those inequalities. Okay, so hopefully you understand this, and if you didn't understand this going into this uh, video, hopefully now you're like, hey, I feel pretty good about this, but here's the deal. Watching me solve a problem is not the same as you getting better at this stuff, all right? If you wanted to get better at basketball, would you sit down and watch the NBA all day? Would you just watch someone play basketball? Hey, I want to learn how to uh, play basketball better, so you know I'm going to watch someone make uh, shots all day long. No, it doesn't work that way. If you watch me do math videos, that's not going to help you. You have to practice this stuff yourself. And it's the same, uh, I like using basketball as an analogy. Uh, would you go uh, out, let's say you want to get better basketball, and you take one shot and you happen to get that shot uh, in. You made the basket. You're like, yay, I made one shot. I must be able to make every single shot every single time. Well, Again, that's not true. So just because you can do one prom doesn't mean that you can do all prompts. You have to challenge yourself with the variety of different situations, etc. So remember what I said in the beginning of this video that you can be successful math if you're willing to work hard. Okay, really, this is a, you know, a, a game of commitment. Okay, you got to challenge yourself. You got to put in the work. Just like basketball players, the only way they get better 
is by practicing and practicing and practicing, okay? And when you make a mistake, figure out, hey, what am I doing wrong? You know, how can I correct it, et cetera. But if you follow, if you have that kind of approach to math, you absolutely will be successful. Okay, so again, if you need help with inequalities, especially compound inequalities, I'm gonna probably direct you towards my Algebra One course in my Math Help program. Again, I do have additional videos on my YouTube channel as well. But uh, with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.